Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, no more. They're all gone. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now and go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, every single one. I mean, our TikTok, our Instagram, our Facebook, our Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But check out our Patreon because that's where you can find all our full length interviews. If you don't want to see the clips, just hop on over to our Patreon channel, but our YouTube channel as well, membership. Y'all love our brand, love what we do. Just go ahead and sign up for our membership, support the brand. Y'all say you love us. We've been grinding for you. So go ahead and support the brand. Yeah, do what she said now. You know, we old, so y'all got to listen to us. I am. She's not old as me, so I'm the elder around this camp. Check it, man. Hey, man, we got a special guest for you guys today. You guys going to be in for a treat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we always try to bring you people who are extraordinary. This young man has uh, been working for a while, but now, you know, uh, these within these last few months, it's been some different people he's working. We're going to get all in his Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? We want to know the flavor, man. Sure. Trey Haggerty sure. is in the building. What's sure. going on, baby? Man, thank you for having me. For you real. better say it again. Thank you for having thank me, for man. Having me. And I, I appreciate you for coming. <laughs> nah, for real. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for coming, man. Um, you know, um, definitely uh, researched you, to, you know, with... with, with you know, just wanted to know more about you. I've seen a few mm. things that you've been working on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get all the way into it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Jamaica, what you got? Um, i like to know. So born and raised. Were you born and raised here in Dallas, Texas? Yeah, born and raised. What part? Born and raised. Duncanville. Duncanville? Duncanville. Yeah. Really? So yeah. did you play Went football? From, from Oak Cliff to Duncanville. Okay. I played football. Yeah. In Duncanville? I played at Duncanville. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's but that I, old coach name over there? I don't want to hear Coach, we keep going to state over there. I would, he, he, he wasn't he there the whenever. Me. Yeah. Uh, I well, you know, Jeff Todd. I actually was transferred, though. I, really? I went Where'd to you Duncanville, come from? Mm -hmm. And I transferred to a school in uh, Cedar Hill called Cedar Hill Trinity. Oh, okay. And I played football there before Deion Sanders got there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Man, so you've you been to all these schools before the real dudes got there. Yeah. What's basically. up with that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so were you any good? Yeah, yeah. I played college football, too. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I you got a scholarship? Mm hmm. Okay, what college? It was a school in Nebraska. Nebraska. Um, yeah, yeah, it was the worst place ever. Why? I would never go back. So did you have choices between Nebraska and somebody else and you just made that choice or you just yeah, that's the only made, one you had? I made that choice cuz they was uh my 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 best friend at the time, they wanted him too. Mm. So I told him I would only come if he come. And they put they chose both of us, so then we both went there. But I left after. You suck. Freshman. But look, the thing is, I was a I was a true freshman, so I got to play on the field my freshman year. I started my freshman year. So I got cocky. I was like, I'm, I'm a freshman. I'm starting. Let me go somewhere else. And he stayed. <laughs> hmm? Your friend stayed? My friend stayed. Yep, yep. See. And I went to uh, Texas State and played football over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's a dope school. Yeah, it was dope. Texas yeah. State. Do you finish? Yeah, I, well, I didn't finish football there, but I but went you finished there. college. Yeah, I finished college, yeah. Okay, that's that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, so growing up, um, Duncanville, raised with your mom and dad? Just my mom. Just your mom? Yeah, just my mom. Typical story. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. but my mom had different, like, couple boyfriends. Like, my, my first stepdad, which I was with him the most. Uh, the he in jail for like murder or something. Mm. Uh, yeah. So my How long dad. were they together for? I probably was. I don't know. Like, I probably was seven to like. I probably met my other stepdad maybe freshman year of high school or something like that. Oh, when you so, say stepdad, you mean these are boyfriends or these are like um, my, my my brother's dad. Dads. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, so okay. So my, my brother, who's like 21 now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It was his dad, you know, his dad was mm -hmm. in the jail. And then my stepdad now, he was in jail too. So he What's just- What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Your mom like a certain type of guy. Yeah, there's a certain type of energy. But now, <laughs> it's different. Yeah. So, but how, did, how was it for you growing up seeing those type of men come in and out of your life yeah. and learning certain things? What did you, what did you grasp from that? Uh, I would say- I didn't really have a role model growing up as far as like a man mm -hmm. role model. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. I didn't never, I never saw a man and looked up like, I want to be like him. Like, mm. nah, you know, I saw dudes in and out of jail, you know. What regular. about, what about your real dad? Yeah. Where, where, never met him, never I, knew I him. I met him, uh, but not really. Haven't talked to him probably since I was. So he just, is he in Dallas? He's in Dallas. Yeah. He never, he didn't go to prison. No. So he wanted to stay at home and yeah, stay out. Did you know your, his mother him. or any of them? You didn't know his no. family? Mm -mm. Wow. Yeah. Man, do you feel like there was a space there where, you know, that father figure was missing? 
For sure. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, and it's crazy. I done reached out a few times, you know what I'm saying? And it just sometimes, you know, it just it just ain't really meant, you know, to be in that way, you know. Uh, exactly. It, you never know what he been through. Exactly. But he's, but he's still exactly. your father. Exactly. So I never yeah. say, like, you know, I'm mad about the situation. I, it's, you, it is you, what it is. You just but, never know. You know, I, it made me who I am. I yeah. Say that. It made yeah. me who I am. And, 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 and if he was willing to talk to you at some point, you would still yeah, sure. rock, yeah, rock, yeah, rock. Yeah, I have no malice in my heart. That's hard. I that. like yeah. that. And you don't, do you know if he has other siblings? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if yeah, other yeah. So kids? I, we, we was hanging out like every other weekend, probably until I was like in sixth grade. Oh, yeah, because okay. you said yeah. seven. You said yeah. seven. Yeah. After that, that's when it kind of. Yeah, but I had you just thought you just thought you was a man and you just started treating him bad. No, I, don't, I don't. I think I was maybe too young to understand. Maybe it was. Maybe his relationship with my mom, or I don't really mm. know. You know what I'm saying? But we just he just stopped reaching out. Do you, you know? have kids now? I have one. You have one. How yeah. old? A one about to be one year old. One year yeah, old. Yeah, he's one in August. Because a lot of times when you start having children for yourself and you start to realize certain things, it makes people want to reach out and you know create that bond again between you know your father and you, so that the grandfather can be there for yeah. years. I, I tried that too. I told him I was having a kid. Not that. Nothing. Nothing. It's probably it's something. Uh, it's something else. Yeah, it's probably, something going on. Probably, yeah. yeah. Something, something going on with him. It has nothing to do with you. Exactly. Mm, and exactly. it's something that I definitely will keep in my prayers because I'm gonna be real with you. You know, if he can get a breakthrough, then things can change. People yeah, can yeah. change, man. Exactly. For sure. That's the biggest sure. part. Like we all evolving. Yeah. We all are n imperfect people as well. Exactly. So I think everybody deserves a fighting chance and a prayer. Exactly. We can at least pray. People pray for me. Yeah, they said I wouldn't even be here. Exactly, a lot of people yeah. counted me out early on, mm -hmm. but look at me today. So I just say, you know, at some point, people change, bro. I mean, and, and it don't matter what, how old they are. Exactly, I know some people that's my age and older than me that still act like they're about fifteen. Mm. You know, running around doing certain things they shouldn't be doing at this mm -hmm. point in life. Exactly, women and men. So I just, I just never put people in a box. But prayer, prayer. Um, Showing love, mm -hmm. uh, all that stuff can help change a situation in a heartbeat. Yeah, um, you are a special kind of guy. Uh, I heard that you had some stuff going on with the youth, with with, with people. Do you help people? Yeah, yeah. So what, I, give me a give me a spiel on that. Uh, I, I own a foster agency. I heard about it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm the youngest owner in the country. I heard about How, it. When did you start that venture? Mm, like two years ago. What inspired you to do something like that? Um. So two things. I seen my mom do it. I seen my mom had an agency for about like four years. Oh, for foster care? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I seen her change kids' lives and I seen her change families' lives. And then um, my little brother, he's a he's adopted. Mm. Um, and then I kind of had my cousins. So my aunt, she she died when I was in like a sophomore in college. And that was mm -hmm. like my mom. Mm -hmm. And um, the two children that she adopted, which is my cousins, when my, when my aunt got into a car wreck, my cousins went to the system and I ain't seen them since. Mm. Yeah, these are like my little sisters, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't. It's crazy, but yeah, they they're gone. Haven't seen them since. So it's kind of pushed me to do the same thing and just trying like, to help people. Exactly, help people, help kids, help families understand that system and try to do what I yeah, can. Yeah, because we always hear so many horror stories. But the other day, for the first time, honestly, um, it was a young lady that was our waitress, and she was like, she didn't have any bad experience in her foster care experience. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she went from foster home to foster home, and she's like, she didn't want to be adopted or anything like that. She said she had a great time yeah, there. But everybody else would say it was terrible. That's why I don't... It, Everybody got different situations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some kids, you know, I might get a kid and we give them amazing homes. I have amazing families, amazing homes that give them that parent parenting they need. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. They just like, you know, I want to do my own thing. So um, some kids are just used to a certain environment, used to certain things. And then when you try to like, when they when you actually have something good for them, they don't really care for it. Do Okay, for um, kids in foster care, do they provide um, counseling for these kids? For sure. Okay. You have to. You have to. You have to. Every every foster child has a therapist. They do. Mm -hmm. How often do they see them? Um, once every two weeks. Is, do you think that's enough? <clears throat> do you think that's enough? That's yes. Question. Do you um, think that's I enough? Don't, I don't. 
every situation different, right? I, I don't know. I think um, that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, you know. I think it's that's like, a great I, I don't answer. Know, but I, what I can say, some kids refuse. Like, you, even though they have a therapist, they don't talk to the therapist. They kind of just sit there because yeah. they don't want to talk. But so, you know what that remind me of? What's that um, movie? Antoine Fisher. Antoine Fisher. He sat in there with Denzel until, okay, you don't want to talk. You're going to sit here until... Till you talk. Till you open much. up. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Exactly. But if, if people cared about these kids as much as that, yeah. then eventually they should see a breakthrough. Yeah. Well I think That's if, the, goal. if, if yeah. the environment is is, is, is is properly, you know, uh attending to those children, I think the environment will cause them to see that love and see that care mm -hmm. and, and it helps. It, a lot of times you can't a person may not want to talk about it. Maybe they maybe they want to just, you know, learn from experience. Yeah. Either way is a teaching moment. Exactly. Talking exactly. about it is cool, don't, and opening up about it is yeah. really right. cool. But sometimes you can open up too much. I hear people talk about this counseling stuff, and and you talk about your problem, but you can only go so far with it before it becomes a problem that you're worshiping. Yeah, sometimes they, you see they, what I'm saying. So they you, get triggered. Some yeah, of them right. Yeah. So right. you you so. got to make it something that's interesting. But I just commend you for uh, not just making it about you, but reaching out and showing others, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, story about the Good Samaritan where the religious people, the per, the, the, the priest and the Levite went, across, went up the road on the other side of the road, but the Good Samaritan picked the guy up and put him on his beast and took him to the next town. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people uh, are, are, are different. They may say they this and they may have an organization doing that, but they don't want to help the process. And just for you to say, hey, I've made that step to help help kids who don't have a father or mother huh. or who going through a situation such as yourself went through you you want to you want to help and exactly. that's, that's that's hard man thank you and what's uh -oh. the name for name of your organization it's trusted family foundation trusted family foundation, foundation. and mm -hmm. they can find it online you know what's crazy i never made i never had to make like a social media instagram no like mm -hmm. i have i already have families i mean i get kids every day yeah, I never made a social media thing for it. This is word of mouth. Yeah, just it's word of mouth. Yeah. Literally. Can a can a kid choose what um, what, which organization they want to go with, or is this where of a CPS? That would be a put question them? for him. Where of a CPS put them? Yeah. That's terrible. Because they might put them in one place, and then they they say the kid acts up over there. They try to send them somewhere else. But sometimes see, they got options. So if they got the options, they put them where they can. Mm. Wow, yeah. I, I want to um, I want to get into the music a little bit with you too. How did you first uh, start your artistry? How, when did you know you you was going to be doing music? Uh, t twelve, twelve. I, I started oh. doing music. And, and you you got like an R and B ish feel to me. You, you yeah get, now. So you sing yeah. a little. So bit. So you never used to sing when you was younger. No, no. you were in the choir. You know. So you did yeah, okay church, the church you thing. Know what I'm okay. Exactly. So. Similar, you know, Baptist church. I grew mm -hmm. up in the church. But now when I was first making music, when I was 12, it was more like rap, rap. Like, I'm trying to be the mm -hmm. best rapper alive, you know? Wow. And then things kind of just elevate, and I changed my sound a million times. Just trying to find you. Trying to find me and different experiences, different environments. Um, and then now I, I found me. Well, but when you look at the way that you came to be who you are, and what what did you start off rapping? Did you start off? Yeah, it was rapping. it was rap. rap you rap. was you like were trying to be the you were sixteen lyricist. bars. Yeah. What was your first rap that you did? My first rap. Yeah, you remember it? How it went? A little bit. It? Let me let me hear a little bit. Like how you how you hit that? Ooh, that's that twelve. Like it's that twelve. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Give it up. Uh, ooh, that's, I, I got yeah, it. That's what I thought. Man. I got it. So look. Uh, I swear I never fall like August. I'm all this and more. I'm high in the game like a score. Below me is the ceiling and I never seen the floor. I know this is amusing, but it can never be fair. The rap game need me like people need her. Never mind, I take their breath away and give it back to them. My girl, something, I've got that. <laughs> bars, bars, nigga, bars. You, you better not play, nigga. Damn, that was in 12 years old. That's, that's crazy. And what was your, what was your I like that because you remember it. I don't. I ain't even have one really. Nah, nigga, just, I'm man. here. <laughs> just yeah, in the building. Nigga. Yeah. Shit, just I'm here. I get it, man. So you you like like you 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 special to even know that you wanted to do music at an early age like that. Yeah, and to stick to your guns to but, to but, follow through. I, I wouldn't even say I wanted to do. I was just doing it. But you yeah, was just was, doing it. Everybody yeah. else was doing it. No, nah, I was just doing it. Just 
as an outlet. Well, you mentioned all like you don't want to fall like August. Well, I mean, is that talking about the season or are you talking about August out? Oh, that was the season. Yeah, fall. Oh, you August, know, I, I fall. thought I'm just trying to see it's what's a double going. entendre. You know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. but no, I didn't even know I was gonna do that. I just was doing it, and because I, I was playing football, you know, okay. that, was, that was my thing, playing football. Okay. Like, um, I was using football to get a degree. That was my whole thing. I didn't yeah. want to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to make it with that. I just wanted to get a free education. Um, and that didn't happen, but yeah, that was my goal. Wow, you're uh, you extraordinary when it comes down to it. When you think about just the fact of you, like I say, you 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 now you have a deal. You signed to Def Jam. Yeah. This Def Jam deal is huge when it comes down to having a connection. If they choose to work with you i've seen people sign and it go crazy i've seen people <laughs> sign and you don't hear nothing yeah. um but but okay did you have the def jam deal when you did this project with uh uh fredo bang yes cool yes, yes. okay so that means they you, you you seeing some traction yeah yeah, yeah. okay so, so and, but, and but i can say it's really about having a team though outside of def jam you know what i'm saying okay um def jam does their thing too but my internal team is the people who who's moving the needles? Shout out to to, to high standards, man. Okay, well, but tell me, how do you end up signing this paperwork to with Def Jam? So, um, I went live with, with on, on Instagram with with Dro. Yeah, you know, yeah, Dro. I talked to Dro earlier. Yeah, yeah, uh, he was an A and R at first. Yeah, he told me that. And I went live with him one day, just hopping on people's lives because I had I had a an offer from Rock Nation before then. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I got. They, they took my deal away because of COVID. Okay. And then um, I hopped on live with Dro. He was just listening to people's music. I played a song. He was like, bro, I want to help you. I'm wow. Like, cool. So Dro was like, yo, I have this team in Dallas that I think you should sign to. I'm like, and I was living in LA at the time. So I'm like, no, I'm not signing to nobody in Dallas. Like, I got away from Dallas. But Dro is is connected because he's he was with Eminem. He managed sure. Eminem. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a and mm -hmm. you know, he's done a lot of stuff yeah. in the industry. Yeah. And and for him to see that in you, he had to see something special in you. And at that time, I, when he said Dallas, I was like, I don't want to do it. And that was just me thinking at first, right? So I'm like, he said, sign these people in Dallas, they dope, they come out of your city. You know what I'm saying? They understand what you've been through. Um, and they, and they make it some good strides. And I'm like, I don't know, Dro. And he was like, trust me, just do it. And at this time I had a lawyer who I got from Rock Nation. Mm -hmm. And um, the lawyer was like, do not sign this deal. It's the dumbest thing you're going to do. If you sign it, I'm never working with you again. And I'm like, oh, damn, why? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I end up um, saying, screw it. I signed the deal anyways. The lawyer went on. I went on. And I signed with High Standards. And the, the owner of High Standards is a dude named J-Dot. Uh, man, J-Dot is an incredible person. And Dro introduced me to him, right? So... J Dot was like, um, he was like, yo, I want to sign you. You know, we're gonna do some big things. You know, let's let's make this work. So I'm like, at that time, I'm like, ah, I'm not trying to sign. I just had Rock Nation offer me. Like, why am I about to sign to a independent label from Dallas? So you know, Dro, I trusted Dro. I, you know, and I and I really like J Dot's energy. I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. So I signed with J Dot um, at high standards. And then I would say like a year after I signed to J-Dot, he came to me, he was like, yo, I just did a, a partnership with Def Jam. Def Jam wants to sign you as an artist. And I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like I signed to him thinking, I, I wouldn't think of nothing, you know? And the lawyer told me not to do it, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, we went up from there. And now Ooh. high standards is that we got, it's me. We got Coco Jones. I don't know if you're familiar with Coco Jones. She got the song I See You. Mm -hmm. Incredible R&B artist. Probably the biggest R&B artist right now out. It's me, it's Coco. And she was also on a TV show called Bel Air. Mm -hmm. um, Lady London. Uh, she's another big artist from New York. Um, super hard. And you got Bobby Sessions. He's an artist from Dallas um, and a songwriter. He's amazing. He wrote Savage for Megan Thee Stallion. Um, it's Us Four. And High Standards is probably the hottest label <laughs> for sure in the state of Texas. Wow. So... Def Jam, what is it now? We know what it was. The label. Uh, I mean, now it's different. What right? is it? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We remember Def Jam, Russell Simmons. Mm -hmm. We remember uh, Jay Z went through there. Mm -hmm. We remember Def Jam South. What is Def Jam? 
What is it now? Have you researched it? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's what little. is it? What is a deal nowadays? Yeah. You know, we're out here trying to figure it out. What's yeah. going on? Most people don't be researching it. They go off of the name, the brand, because yeah. they already build yeah, their sure. repertoire. Yeah. So it's yeah. like... Um, it, it's different. Of course, it's different deals, right? But like I said, I was blessed enough to sign to an independent label and to Def Jam. Okay. So that way, my team, like high standards, we make all the decisions. I don't have to go to an A&R or try to listen to blah, blah, blah in the label. It's whatever we decide, the label is gonna back that. You know what I'm saying? Just like if Kendrick was signed to TDE. TDE makes the decisions, and Interscope, or whoever t uh, Kendrick was signed to at that time, just puts up the money. Um, so that's kind of how my deal is set up. Like, High Sentence is my team, we moving, whatever we wanna do, especially because Coco is killing the game right now. I think our song just went platinum. Um, the door is open for us to do a lot of things. <laughs> they trust what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And Lady London and, and, and Bobby and me, we have, you know, we have a lot of success. So, like, we priority right now. Um, wow. But Dev Jam has a lot of, they got a new president, Tunji. Okay. I love Tunji. Tunji has great taste in music. He came from, um, he came from RCA. Okay. Um, I think he was, he was an R&B cat. Okay. Know? So he came from the world of R&B and now taking over Dev Jam, he's built a different type of system over there. It's not the old, old Def Jam no more. It's like newer sounds, newer talent, young, hungry people in the building. Like it's it's, it's different. Wow, proud of you. Uh, I want to uh, ask you about uh, undivided attention with you and Fredo Bang. Like that's a banger. I mean, I love the feel. Uh, y'all did that up in Cali, or where, where did y'all do that at? I made the song in in L.A. In L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made so, it in L.A. and then after we finished it. Um, I told my label like, "Yo, this is one of the ones," you know, and they was like, "Yeah, we agree. This is one of the ones," um, and we just went back, bounce back and forth like, "Who we think fit on there?" And I was like, "Yo, what about Fredo? Like, you know, he he gives something to the to the streets, he gives something to the to the women, you know. I need that balance, you know what I'm saying?" Um, it was like, "Yo, this is a dope idea," and Fredo happened to be signed to Def Jam too. Wow, so it made it made it, it easier, easier, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, it went from there. And Fredo's a good dude. He came and shot the video in Miami. Um, it was it went up from there. Y'all kicked it in Miami. Like mm. like how was how was it shooting that video down in Miami? It was fire, fire. Beautiful Who shot the there. video? Legit looks. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been shooting with them. They shot my expensive emotions video too. I don't know if you've seen that one, but yeah, they did a good job. Yeah, they fire, fire, super fire. So wow, they trust my vision. Like even if I come with ideas, they're gonna make sure they they, they um make sure it happens. And uh, yeah. As an artist, what makes you stand out different from everybody else? My story, my journey. Like, how many rappers or singers you know with a false agency? Probably zero. Mm -mm. How many rappers you know with an engineering degree? Probably zero. It's not possible. No, it's, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean like that. It's definitely possible, but not many, right? Or mm -hmm. how many people you know, how many artists and rappers you know own a business? Not many. A lot of them do. Some of them, not yeah. all of them. But yeah, how many you know play college football? Not many. So I done did so many different things. It, I think it, it makes me have a different perspective than a normal artist. I don't drink, mm -hmm. I don't smoke, you know? Like, I'm not the typical what rapper or whatever you want to call it that people think in their heads. Like, I'm educated, I'm just as business-minded as somebody that works. You remind me of Plies. That's what Plies, Plies and you kind of like. Really? I ain't know that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I say, I know that. No, he do, but he do have a, I mean, he is educated and stuff, but he don't, his, you might not know it from the music, but he's definitely a he guy is. that's, that's. See, I be wanting to hear stuff like that. Like, yeah. He but I he ain't not drinking and smoking. Oh, he got that yank or something on that. He ain't even play with you on that. <laughs> yeah, not many people don't drink. I don't drink or smoke. But, but oh, really? You, yeah. yeah. Okay. Stop playing. You ain't, you ain't yeah, by okay. yourself. But you have a few, <laughs> you have a few, we've had a few that's been on our show that don't drink or smoke that has um, their master's degree from a university that played football. You know, they don't own a foster agency, but they've done all of the other things. So mm. we've, we, I've heard that before. Oh, so you ain't special, she trying to tell you. That's what she's trying to say. <laughs> trying to say but that's what she's trying to say. I'm gonna be honest with you, they ain't got no foster care. They ain't they ain't on your level with it. So ain't nobody and like doing you. music at a certain and level. Doing, yeah, you on yeah, a I'm level, saying, like, like, yeah. It's not, also, okay, is they, if they got their team right, if they signed yeah, the Def Jam, exactly, get on it. Don't exactly. play with so, them. So hold on, you don't need them. Okay, okay but you know you're talking mean? like that. So what are what are your plans <laughs> to stay there and keep elevating? Because I've heard people who get there, 
but then they either get shelved or they get they one hit wonder one hit wonder Uh or you know and then they they go back to their regular you know what's gonna make you what what's your plan because you have to have a plan you talking about both that's gonna make you keep elevating and not go back to the person you used to be yeah i mean no one wants to go back to the president okay so (laughs) what's the plan uh, i mean just trusting the journey trusting trusting my team like I don't, I don't know everything, right? And I don't act like I do. So just trusting the people around me. And if God wants me to be a successful artist, then that's what I'm going to be. Um, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts. But as far as if I don't, I'm still going to touch people with, with the, my other stuff. I'm still going to have a foster agency regardless. I'm still going to touch kids regardless. I'm still going to do events in the community. Like, I'm still going to do that. So music is just a, another thing on top of it. Do you... Um I mean, do you want? Would you like to work? You and Fredo plan on working again uh, together somewhere down the line, or I hope so. Yeah, we, I, we, I'm going on tour with them. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So tour, tour yeah. starts. Tour, uh, tour for start here pretty yeah, quick. August, like yeah. 18th. Yeah, something like that. yeah. yeah. It's and how long will it go for? October, October uh, 16th, something like that. Yeah, he could get it in. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's, uh, uh, expensive emotions. Yeah. Um, what was the, I mean, that seemed like the one that, you know, you got the most push up on back, you know, back mm, before, mm. uh, what made that one stand out and what made it different? Um, I was just being vulnerable, you know, talking and just giving a perspective of, you know, women that, um, uh, have expensive emotions, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's, that's, that's okay. You know, if you've got expensive emotion, that's, that's, that's cool. You know, um, I'm not going to say I don't like bougie. Cause I'm kind of bougie. I ain't gonna count. <laughs> I'm kind of bougie. Bougie is, is acceptable. Yourself, man. Well, okay, explain your terms of bougie. bougie I like nice things. Like I, I wanna, I wanna, I, I drive nice. I, I fly nice. I, I eat nice. I, okay. I stay somewhere nice. Like I like nice things. Um, wow. And that's just a standard I like to set for myself. And if a woman, you know, set set herself those same standards, that's okay. But it just depends how you lead. Like if you lead with your heart and you pure hearted. That's cool. But if you just a woman that, you know what I'm saying? It's all about materialistic it's all about, stuff. Yeah, then now you got expensive emotions and I, I, I don't fuck with it. So That's hard. Well, two sides. Let's talk about two sides. Two sides. Oh, shoot. Yeah, two sides. That's, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. That's a hell of a type. Two sides. <laughs> My life is two sides. So, yeah. yeah. And that song, I made it because I was a, I loved L.A., but I had a down south vibe. You know, like I'm from L.A., but I mean, I'm from Dallas, but I got an L.A. vibe. Yeah. So, uh, I just wanted to, you know, tell a story from like another standpoint. Like, yeah, I'm from here. But I'm also doing things here, and you can do both. Like people think, especially out here, people think like I'm from Dallas. I gotta sound like I'm from Dallas. Like on my music wise, my music don't may, may not sound Dallas, mm-hmm. uh, or what people think is Dallas. Right? I want to bring a new sound to to Dallas. But um, yeah, I don't. I may not sound like that, but um, where do the, people say you sound like you're from? You know how I go. Sound like this, this person, this person. I just be like, oh, guess what's up? You know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Yeah, do they you, don't know. Uh, you don't usually do a lot of songs with uh, features. This this Fredo Bangles was one that, yeah. you know, yeah. this, this was a, that, was, uh, uh, that was something different for you. Yeah. I mean, I've I, I worked with a lot of artists. Don't get me wrong. Like, especially on the songwriting side, I've yeah. songwriting for artists too. Um, and we'll work on music, but. To be honest, I be I be so busy just trying to be build genuine relationships. I don't even be caring about the music. Like I sit with a person, we just talk about other stuff. Like, like my best friends, they do music. We don't even got songs together. Wow. We just talk wow. <laughs> regular on regular other stuff. Life. Who would you like to collab with? Like like uh, that if you could pick anybody, who would who would you think that you can make some uh, uh, make history, make us uh, one of those everlasting songs? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Oh, everlasting. There's a few artists. Name right. an everlasting song. That's an effort. I Man, I was talking to my homie about this the other day. Like, I feel like now, what is an everlasting song? Because <laughs> uh, I'm happy by Pharrell. That's, you that's, you, that's you, you play that all song. day. Uh, uh, what's, what's the most recent one? one, though? The most recent that one? That you feel like could be everlasting right now. Like 2022, 2023. No, 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 no. Nothing. People not putting, people not digging. Not one song. Yeah, it, it, I don't, there's nothing that's, that that I can think of that just just blew the waves. You, you anything? 
you know, your, your one, one love uh, with, with, with Bob That's Marley. That's old, though. But it's he's still an about, everlasting song. Yeah, but I'm he's just talking saying, about recent. Right, yeah, recent right song. now, What's I know what he's talking about, but I'm trying to get my mindset right. You got to be heavy. Like, happy birthday to you about Stevie Wonder. It'll never go nowhere. They're yeah. going to play it forever. Um yeah. I mean, I feel like in those times, music was different, right? It's, that's, it what was I, that's, different. What that's what People I'm. That's what I'm moving to. Music yeah. they, they took it different. So, do you feel like there's any songs right now? No, because will? the generation that we're in right now, especially you know when you think about rap and stuff, is all about the drill music and stuff like that. Those type of music <laughs> is not going to be no yeah. everlasting songs. It has to be a song that you can play for occasions. Exactly. You understand when people mm -hmm. can play them at parties, a dance song, mm -hmm. um, a turn up song, something mm -hmm. that every time it comes on, it's it's just you can't help but move. Yeah. I don't see that. None. I kind of, I kind of agree. That's interesting. What do you think? There's a few. Like what? Like what? what? Uh, what's the song with uh? Recent es essence is it essence essence with uh. Sing it. Um, I got body. Yeah. I got yeah, yeah, but that ain't that. What's, what's her name? You uh, think that's you think that's everlasting? I, I mean, uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, you said you said it's not on no level said the like most that, bro. Song everlasting song. I think. That's oh the yeah, yeah, one. <laughs> that's one. You know, he I think. It, I know the song. <laughs> you really uh, reaching for that? But how no. long ago was that song come out? It's been a minute. Like twenty twenty two. Yeah, it's been a minute. Like okay. Yeah, it sound like you know what I'm talking about. Essence. No, he don't know. Really, it. I know that song. Well, um, I heard the song. I heard before, the but song, I, but I don't. That's know. not a song oh. that I'm just gonna be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got body. But I forgot. I forgot her name. The artist. Uh, but that's not a song yeah. that I'm just gonna play every single you know party or choose to pick. Okay. To play. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, we got to do better. I believe. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> we got to do better, man. Basically. The other generations, y'all just shorten the damn music up. <laughs> y'all got the song going two minutes. Ain't nobody remember that. You got to bang this into people's head in order to get them to hear it. But you know what's crazy, though? That you say that. This is stupid. Industry standard. Like, even when you hear A&Rs, producers, everybody, they're like, keep your song shorter than two minutes. See? Yeah. Like, that's what everyone wants because to do. Because attention span, they say that this generation attendance, attention span is short. Very, very short. And... It's like a, a minute. Even like when you look at social media, reels and stuff is yeah, a minute. Sure. So Shorts, a, a minute. When, when I make music and I see if it's over two minutes and a half, I, I cut it. I try to cut it. Just because I've been conditioned to think this song needs to be shorter than three minutes. Damn. I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. Y'all done messed True. up everything. But how hard you is it to get You and your A&R buddies and all y'all with Def Jam and all these <laughs> other rock nation, y'all. Get off the gas. <laughs> we want a song. That's Four fine. minutes. But how hard is it to get your message across in a shorter, you know, shorter span time. Uh, I mean, it's not hard. You 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 understand how to make music, so but you kind of know what. To, but it do just it. don't last long. It's just you know again you know, it's different it's time. Not. So people, this is a certain structure that they think okay, this can do well. Because let's say I made a four minute song, will people actually listen? Yeah, if it's good enough. If it's good enough, no. If you tricky. bring it hard enough and good enough, they will play that thing. It's oh, got no. to be good enough. Oh, you, no. you, y'all focus on my, no. my, my, my coochie pink and my booty whole brown <laughs> and all this stuff, man. Let it go. But you, you know the song. Only reason I know it because it's crazy the, the <laughs> title, but it ain't gonna be like it. I mean, when you first heard uh, uh, FNL, yeah, it, it, it was gold for a minute. But that's always been crazy songs, though. From from but here I'm to just the end saying, of, beginning but the at the end of the day, the it, where is the where is that one that don't you just don't let it go? There are artists out there. I think there's artists for everything, right? You do have the FNFs, I mean I, the, the Glorillas and the Sexy Reds, which speak to a certain demo, demographic of people mm -hmm. that, that they, they need that. I you think know? I'm just they old. Hear that? I'm just old. Let me make it. I'm just okay, old. I'm just old. Let's talk about a Vanilla Ice. What was he talking about? That nigga was. Come on. <laughs> Straight up out of Dallas, wasn't he? Well, he said, I push it. I mean, what? What well, were you talking about? about? It was fascinating. Ice, ice, it was baby. fascinating to see ice, a white ice, guy, on. a white guy with a little bit of pizzazz, pizzazz or a, a little bit of swagger. He was. That's why it, that sold, and the beat was nice. Uh, so uh, that's why FNF sold because the beat's nice. And yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. You know? Man, what's your top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Number any genre, any genre, in any order. Or oh, any genre, in mm -hmm. any order, in any order. Three. Top three. You can do it number one. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Number one. 
Typical. Wayne. Man, that, man, that's my boy right there. Come on, man. Wayne. That nigga and number it. two. Number two. I'll give it to you. You did that. Andre 2000. Damn, boy. At number three. Don't do it no more. Get on off the gas, boy. Don't do it no you more. Any artist. <laughs> any genre. That boy hit that. You, hey, you, you we, I, see, I got. See, now, now I'm going to go somewhere else because. Yeah, because you was in the South. Maybe you know, like. I'm, I'm so South driven. Who? Maybe like Beyonce. Ooh, okay. that nigga, that boy, is my favorite nigga right there, boy. Because yeah. so, you like stayed that. in the total South. That's <laughs> why yeah. he wasn't in the Midwest. Oh, yeah, we're in the South with it. He wasn't in the. Uh, uh, no, no, that boy in the South. South. Y'all, Boss Talk 101 is, is in the South, y'all. And uh, <laughs> check it, man. Trey just showed y'all the truth. You know what I'm saying? Haggerty is in the building. Def Jam made the right decision. This young man is going to go places. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Thank you. For real. Thank Say, you. But no, man. Um, if you could go back, man, and um, you could, uh, uh, you know, go back before college. Mm -hmm. And you could go back when you was getting ready to get out of high school. Would you change anything? Nothing. You leave it all the same. All the same. Man, that's all. In church, when you sang, what were, what are you, a tenor or an alto or what? Don't At that time, it. I was just singing. Don't just do sing. it. I don't even know. <laughs> I was just trying don't to sing. Don't do it. Don't do it. She yeah. trying to set you up, baby. <laughs> I was just trying I to I see that setup coming. Yeah. You want to no, get that song. I'm coming up. I want to yeah. hear all you sing me a song. Yeah. <laughs> right, listen, I am, you want to give me a song? I am not. So you want to sing for me? <laughs> if I did, you'd run out of here. You, I you, cannot so sing at so you, all. You from Jamaica? Yes, but I cannot sing. You can't sing at all. I thought Jamaican people can. No, 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 no they can't sing. No. They're not like no, us. No, but you no. can dance. No, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've been married to him for twenty years, man. Yeah. He said, "Oh no." <laughs> We we what that is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Whatever. We what that is over here. Whatever. That's good. <laughs> yes, sir. Nah, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of if they're trying to rock out with you? Man, just uh, reach out. Trey Haggerty on all platforms. So T-R-A-Y-H-A-G-G-E-R-T-Y. Uh, -E Hit me up. Man, yeah. thank you so much, man. I hope we did you justice, man. Nah, um, uh, you like I real. said, man, yeah, hey, man, we, it'll be again. We're going to do this again. We're going to run sure. it back. This, this family forever chain. This is... That's hard. That's hard, now. man. I love family. it. So I love it. I take this serious. That this is, is so dope. Y'all are my family. Whatever y'all need, whether it's, I want to know y'all. If Joe got to send y'all something, some whatever it is, we're going to send it. And that's hard, that's man. Sure. Say, man, listen, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.